AC power distribution. The war of the currents. In the late 1880s, electrical power began to be supplied to metropolitan households. Thomas Edison, a proponent of the use of DC distribution, and George Westinghouse, a proponent of AC distribution, were at odds over which system would be used in the U.S. This controversy has been historically referred to as the War of the Currents. Go online and find out more. Here are sources of electric power. Uh, you can see this, uh, this distribution, um, this uh, pie chart. Um, it depends on who's, <coughs> who's trying to establish what um, with regard to uh, what these actual percentage, percentages are. Um, you know, sometimes you see natural gas at 22%, other times you see it at 20 uh, sometimes you see coal at 49, sometimes you see it at 53. But this pretty much represents, uh, within a percent or two, how things break down. Um, you'll notice a substantial amount of um, use of um, uh, nuclear and natural gas. And of course, the largest uh, source is at coal. And then other than these three major sources of hydroelectric power is next. Renewables are growing, however. Uh, here's a diagram showing how AC power gets to your home. The frequency is constant at 60 hertz from the generating uh, station to home power outlet. In fact, if you were down at Boulder Dam in the powerhouse, you can actually hear the, the home of the generators at about 60 hertz. The voltage is not held constant. The generator voltage is stepped up to a very high voltage in a step-up transformer. Such transformers are huge. The high voltage is transmitted through power lines to a substation near you. The voltage is then reduced by a series of step-down transformers to the voltage supplied to your home, which is normally 240, 220, 115. Note that the voltage on transmission lines vary from 138,000 to 705,000 volts. Big time voltages. Why AC1? Why did AC prove to be the best system? Well, the basic problem with DC was the voltage drop in the power lines. The low voltage, high current DC system was used. The power plant would have to be within a mile or so of the household in order to provide power at a reasonable cost. Copper was then and still is expensive. Remember, voltage drop equals current times resistance. The invention of the transformer provided a way to step up the generator voltage by factors of 1,000 or more. This reduced the current in the transmission lines by factors of 1,000 or more. Remember, transformers don't work for DC, so it wasn't possible to do this uh, with Edison's system. Using an AC system allows us to send huge amounts of power over great distances with relatively small losses due to conductor resistance. 